this video we're going to do something a little bit different, um, something a little bit more out of my comfort zone, but uh, we're going to give it a try anyway here and uh, maybe we'll both learn something here. Um, I had a request, had somebody send me a picture and I had a request to to digitize it for them and I'm not really comfortable digitizing a picture, uh, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start digitizing it and that way hopefully some people will get the idea of the way I would do it anyway and uh, maybe they can actually finish the job or finish another job that is similar to this. Now this isn't going to be a full color picture we're just going to do something that's black and white. Um, full color is completely out of my comfort zone um, something I've never done. We've digitized for nearly 30 years um, but company logos, letters and stuff like that are completely different than photographs and um, definitely something I wouldn't be interested in even tackling. Uh, but what we've got here is we've got a good um, line drawing of a colored photograph and I'll turn the uh, backdrop on so we can see it here. Now as you can see somebody's taken this colored photograph and they've used some sort of uh, technique in uh, some graphics program and turned this into uh, sort of like line art and it's kind of sketchy kind of reminds me of a pencil drawing and that's the way I'm going to try to digitize this. We're not going to go for any colors or anything like that. We're just going to do it as one color and um, see what see what we can do here. Again, we're not going to go clear through this because this could take quite a while, but let's get started. The first thing I'm going to tell you is that we need to look at this picture to start with and see in what order we're going to digitize this. The first thing I notice is the man is behind the woman. So we're going to do him first, then we would do her second so that uh, she would cover up any of the areas and it would appear that she would be in front. So we're going to work on him first. And most of the what I'm going to digitize here is I would really like to do this in all running stitches. Um, it would take a lot of time to do that but I think it would really look best so we're going to cheat and we're going to use uh, probably running stitches and we're going to use complex fills and we're going to lower the density of those complex fills to give it the illusion of some running stitches um, to give some more of the more solid areas. So we're going to start out with our running stitch tool. Now to, to decide where to start here I can't tell you how it sticks out in my head but right here on his collar is the most obvious spot to me to start. I'm going to work down, I'm going to do his suit jacket first and then we would work up and start on his um, on, the, on the head here. So I'm going to start here. This will give us a chance to cover up our starting stitches. So we're going to just start here and we're going to work down his lapel here first and um, we got to have to path this a little bit I guess now that I look at this. So we're just going to come down his lapel with a running stitch and I'm not going to use any curved running stitches. I'm only going to use straight ones and that's mostly for um, keeping this video as short as possible because I know it's going to run long. So now that I've worked down his lapel I'm going to use, I'm not, I'm not trying to do anything on her right now. I just want to concentrate on her, her, sorry, on him, but we're going to use her arm here to cover up or hide some of the stitches so we can get to this area over here that is really not connected. So we're just going to use our running stitches to get right down to this point. Now this area which is his arm or the like the wrinkles in his suit jacket, I guess that would be called, which gives us the texture of his arm. We're going to do again in all running stitches and I'm going to do it fairly quickly here and I'm just kind of going to put a running stitch over and back everywhere where I see a line. First one I see is down here at the bottom hoping you can see this and then I'm going to start here and I'm going to come over to here I'm going to come back and I'm going to come down and go ahead and do that line there like that. Now the rest of these actually go pretty easy. We just need to work our way up here and then back to where we started. That way we make sure everything's going over twice. And where there isn't a line connecting we just need to make it connect and we kind of need to do it in logical places so that it doesn't look like there's a line where there shouldn't be but maybe we're just extending a line. So we're just going to work our way up here. Again these are all straight lines. If we did these in curves it would probably give it a little bit better look but it would also extend out how much time it's going to take here. So I'll go ahead and finish this up 
and then we'll take a look at this finish that up now when we work our way back down here we're going to have covered all these lines twice so we're going to get to there and I'm going to go ahead and stop there I'm going to right click which is actually going to show me the stitches we're going to kind of turn off the uh, the backdrop here so we can kind of see it now they're not placed very exact and we could do some editing to that and we're actually going to do that here in a minute but let's Let's continue on. We're right back here. We're going to work back up her sleeve where we're just burying these stitches. I'm going to get to here, come back up here to this little spot here, which it's kind of shaded. It's a little bigger. It's not just a line. So this would be a good place to do a complex fill. And I'll go ahead and zoom in on this. Get this like that. I'm, I'm right here. I'm going to get that complex fill tool. And I'm going to start it, uh, let's see. We'll start it on an angle like this. Go across here and back. Uh, just right click and you can see what shape I've actually filled that. And I do like this direction that it picked. I'm not sure how it picks the direction. I don't think it can be set by the points that I uh, plot. But of course it can always be changed. So I've got a complex fill in there and um, I'm just going to click on um, over here and I'm going to run that up to about 70 uh, 0.7 millimeters and that gives us not such a solid look and then I'm going to zoom back out here and we're going to finish back up to here and we're going to see how this looks this first step here so go back to our running stitch back up to here and on our way back up to where we started, I'm going to go ahead and do this little piece right here, which forms his shoulder. And there's a couple lines there, and I'm going to go ahead and put a couple lines back and forth here to give that a little bit extra thickness. Come back to here, and we're right back to where we started. I'm going to right click there, uh, finishing off that running stitch section there. Again, turn the, turn the backdrop off back on not a lot to see yet but here's we've done this much of it here um, all running stitches and before we go in and do any editing to it which I kinda wanna show you that I'm gonna continue on and the next piece I wanna do is just right in line where we're at I wanna do this which is the other side of his lapel it's a little darker than here because there would be a shadow because there'd be um, this edge here where his shirt would be further down in there so that creates a shadow so what we're going to do is we're actually going to do that also in a um, complex fill but to give this same effect what I'm going to do here is when I do my running stitch down to this side here I'm going to go ahead and run it on the top side of that or on the heavier side and then I'm going to go back over it like this And that, you'll see in a minute, once I do that, that'll make that side a little bit darker. And the other side, down here where you see a lot of the dots, that's going to be a little smaller. And then right here you can see why we want to do him first. We're going to get him here, and when her hair would come down over top of that, that's going to help with the illusion that he is behind her. So now that I've got that in there, uh, right click so you can see that's pretty much just a straight line but it's going to make this side a little heavier than over here I'm going to run the complex fill over here but this side here will look darker or uh, lighter and the other side will look darker so with the complex fill we're going to start it out um, I'm going to bring it out into this white area a little bit just outline this area and I'm going to bring this and I'm not going to go all the way up there I want to stop right there and then on this heavy side, I want to keep that in closer to that line, but not too close where that line would stick out. And we'll get this side of the fill done. Back to where we started, right click makes the complex fill. Now here it looks pretty solid. I'm going to go ahead and with that fill selected, I'm going to go ahead and run that density up to 80 or 70 here, whatever, whatever kind of looks good. Now as we zoom in on this, what were the just a little bit of an illusion maybe when we sew it we'd see it more. Where our running stitches were put back and forth up here, we've got a little bit darker look 
than down here where this side doesn't have any running stitches under it it looks a little more open which is the way our picture looked because these were dots now the other thing that's important here is when we're using this complex fill if I can get it selected here when you're using this complex fill since we're plotting all these stitches we need to get in here and make sure this underlay is turned off and I need to do that on that other one too that way we're determining all of the stitches and it gives a little bit better view where this is here um, this line will make that a little more solid this edge will look a little more ragged if we have the underlay on it may if we did like a contour underlay it may not give us the look we want so let's zoom back out um, turn the picture off or the backdrop off back on we can kind of see what we're forming here so let's just continue on and I stop that complex fill right here in that direction I do like um, it seems to be picking good directions for me I like this angle if I had to say I wanted to adjust it I would probably do it a little bit less of an angle so I'm going to move it just like that and I actually don't like that I'm going to pull it back down a little bit I just kind of like that angle uh, we could always change it when we start actually sewing samples of this um, but from my experience I think I would kind of like that I'm going to go back to a running stitch now I'm going to finish out his shirt collar and maybe that's as far as we're going to get in this video it goes by really quickly here so I'm going to take this running stitch and I'm going to do his chin first again I'm using straight lines but I'm keeping them pretty close together so it will look pretty round Finish size on this is approximately five inches tall. Until we sew an actual sample, we wouldn't know if we have enough stitches in here, but this is what we're shooting for is about five inches. We've got his chin, nice smooth line there. We're going to keep that one thin. This one here, again, a shadow. Difference between his shirt and his skin, the depth there creates a shadow. We're going to do the same thing with a little complex fill. We're going to come down it. I'm not going to exaggerate that one side in darkness. We don't really need to do that. I'm going to go ahead and from this picture I can't tell but it kind of looks like it has a tie on. So what I'm going to stop here and I'm just going to define this would be the edge of his collar where it goes around the tie. A lot of this will get covered by her hair but I'm going to go over that again. So these will actually have four rows of walk stitches and I'm not being real careful where I put them and that's kind of the point this is more of a sketch that doesn't mean there's a stitch in the wrong place when we sew it that we don't want to move but we're going to start with it kind of sketchy so I'm going to just come on up here and we need to form this dark spot right here I'm going to go back to our complex fill and we're going to just define the area and I'm going to go ahead and do this whole area all the way up here back to here this will we'll keep this plenty thin because we don't want it to be too overpowering but since we're going to use such a light density I think we can do that skinny of an area in a complex fill and not have a problem again we right click we run this back up to 70 and that didn't apply that I need to make sure that's selected back up to 70 and we now have this area so let's see what this looks like without the picture as we can see his his suit and his chin is kind of coming together there so I think I'm gonna stop the video right here I will do another video and continue on from here um, the next video thing we're gonna start out with is we're gonna do a little bit of editing right where we're at uh, before we go any further to kinda of give a couple different um, looks to this design so um, next video coming up shortly and I'll see you there.